hello, hello, and welcome everyone to our BG5 Live. Today is April 27th, 2021. This is episode 102. And today we're going to take a look at trait 24. This is going to be the last trait that we're going to take a look at where purpose is fulfilled through the mind. So we're going to be taking a look at trait 24 in quality number one. So we're going to take a look at rationalizing the sin of omission. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. All right, before we get started, let's say hello to our panel. So let's start with Natalie. Hey, Natalie, welcome, welcome. Yay, so happy to be here. Great mm -hmm. to have you here. Welcome, welcome. welcome. What's that? Welcome, everybody. Yes, yes. <laughs> and Linda, hey, Linda, welcome. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. Happy to be here as well. Great to have you here. And my name is Karen Sherwood. Again, Anna is still uh, recovering. So again, please send her some healing vibes. And I'm not going to be here next week. So Natalie's going to take over and we're going to have uh, Tuck join us next week. Uh, so again, welcome, welcome, welcome to everyone who's live in our Zoom room, as well as those that are live on Facebook or those uh, listening to the recording. So let's jump in and take a look at rationalizing the sin of omission. So again, taking a look at trait number 24 in quality one. So let's take a look at, uh, again, just getting the context of where we are coming to the end of April and this awakening of the life force energy to know. So we're at the to know in April. So again, this is the last trait of purpose fulfilled through the mind. Next week, we are going to be moving into the two. Uh, and the two is the start of purpose fulfilled through form. So this is part of the four ways, basically the transition from, if you will, the mind to form. Uh, so we have taken a look at, whoops, click too fast. We took a look at initiative in the 51, the ability to respond to shock and adaptation. We took a look at growth in the 42, completing the cycle is at the heart of growth. Last week, we took a look at ordering to transcend confusion and establish order, as well as nourishment, the compassion and energy to care for others. And today we are going to wrap up April by taking a look at rationalization. There is no proof or experience, only knowing, right? This is individual. So there's no proof on the logic side or experience on the experiential abstract side. It is only knowing. So that's what we're going to take a look at. We also just moved into, and I don't know if you've noticed, I'd be curious to hear if any of you have noticed this shift as the background frequency change. So remember, we shifted into the nine and the 16, both in quality six, right? So we have this uh, focus of gratitude, joy that comes with accepting small rewards for small victories, and also the skills uh, with gullibility, the susceptibility to propaganda and the ability to experience and examine um, or reject misleading enthusiasm. So I've definitely been present to this first one, this, uh, this focus on gratitude and this joy that comes with accepting small rewards for small victories. So I've definitely been experiencing, experiencing that over the last few days. I believe it moved into that in, uh, uh, on Friday. So I would love to hear, I don't know, Natalie or, or Linda, if, if you've noticed what the, the shift uh, in moving from, you know, where we were previously, where it was this waiting um, patterns, waiting for progress, uh, moving into this gratitude as well as gullibility as well. Have you noticed anything? Yes, I have noticed that um, the, the influence of the fight, the waiting, uh, it's gone. <laughs> mm. I feel more at peace. And yeah. more calm. And also what you were sharing, more focus on gratitude and more able to be present in the now instead of waiting with an yeah, eye for the future. Um, mm. I, I feel more calm. Yeah. Yeah. And more focused in the now. Um, yep. So I really enjoy this 
background frequency and also have experienced the 27 as well. I was mm. for myself able to get some rest and normally I wouldn't be able to, <laughs> but I did. So I love this frequency, just to continue. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Being able to nurture yourself, care for others. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. How about for you, Natalie? Have you noticed anything? Well, I, I have trade nine in my design, right? Uh, in, in a, in a mm -hmm. strength. So I haven't noticed anything particular different, but um, there is, there is like Linda says, more peace kind of mm. to it. Yeah. So that, that's probably coming from somewhere. <laughs> Right, exactly. I did a um, every every once in a while, every other month or so, I do a, a makeover magic show, and and we just had a really great show, and it really felt like we cared for each other, and and just comments that I heard people share um, were this this gratitude and this feeling of things are finally moving forward, and um, you know the gratitude of being there. So I've definitely uh, been feeling this uh, this shift in the energy. So uh, be interesting to hear how all of you have experienced that as well. Now, I also, I'm not going to be here next week, but I wanted to give you a heads up and I'll have Natalie talk more about this next week. But one of the things to be aware of, this is from Satanya. Um, FX on Facebook. If you haven't followed him, it's uh, he's amazing. Um, says, so what if Neptune is moving into gate 36 for almost three years? I'm just going to have a cup of coffee. So <laughs> um, just so you know, May 9th, which is going to be uh, 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 not this week, but the following week, we have a uh, trait 36. And remember, we took a look at 36 not too long ago. 36 is crisis. And uh, so on the... Um, on the 9th of May uh, is when what's hidden moves into crisis. And it, again, it is uh, one of those that is slow, slower to move. So it will go retrograde on, um, in August 12th. Uh, so it'll go back to 22 and then it'll go back direct uh, in 2022 in March. And so we're going to have a little period here where, in a sense, the crisis is in what's hidden. So it may be revealing things that are hidden or a crisis that is revealed from uh, what is hidden as well. Uh, so just to give you a little heads up, just to something to look, <laughs> something to look forward to. And crisis is not always bad. Crisis often awakens us to something new. So I just wanted you to, to be aware of it. And then uh, 36 is going to be in the back, you know, background frequency for about three years until it, uh, until it shifts into the 25 in 2024. So just thought that was interesting. I don't know, Natalie or, or Linda, if there's anything you wanted to add there. But again, just just an interesting noticing, just something well, to pay attention to. I have to. my cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it will, it will be an interesting one. And I actually have the 35 so, uh, on the other side. So, so mm. I will feel it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be an interesting one. Exactly. And, and I also have the 30 of the, of the fates like in the stream. So... Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So Cheers. Just yeah. Years. Mm -hmm. What was that, Linda? Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Cheers. <laughs> just looking forward. <laughs> <laughs> and gratitude for small victories, right? Uh -huh. So, so exactly. again, you know, crisis can be destabilizing. Again, it also can be awakening as well, because oftentimes, you know, it's uh, sometimes you need crisis to be able to to see what else might be possible. Sometimes things need to be torn down so that you can see something new. So again, it's no, and, what's and, hidden. So it's like, um, I don't know, it feels to me like the, the veil of something is going to be um, revealed or, you know, the, the crisis is just under the surface that may then uh, appear at the surface. So yeah, be because if you think about it, uh, also personal growth, the, 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 the biggest steps or leaps you take is out of crisis right True. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, when people go through crisis uh, or depression or whatever or or crisis you know losing their job or whatever um it's it's tough 
but on the other side usually people have have gone through real leaps in personal growth so if we you know make that bigger to the world you know and and going through a crisis if we think about you know this process uh from you know may may <laughs> from now until 2024 and i actually shared yesterday in my class also that that i believe i don't have anything to uh, how do you say that to 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 make it concrete and i we've never lived in such a period you know we've lived in this 400 something years but we are now in the of, of the era that we are in of planning, but we are going to the era of the individual and we live in the last seven year cycle. But I don't think uh, that all of those seven years will be crisis. But I do think, and I actually mentioned it yesterday, that, that the shift will be in 2024. Like we will now um, go through all of this turbulence and 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 things breaking down and 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 the uh, support systems that 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 are there that we build over these four hundred years, but I I also kind of feel and I don't know exactly I don't have a particular why I think that so it's interesting that actually the crisis is until twenty twenty four and then I think we will grow into it so. If you think about it if, um, with uh, personal cycles, if you have your 30 year milestone or your 50 year milestone, your 40 year milestone, you have like a year and a year and a half or two years growing, growing, you know, shifting to this change and then growing into it. Right. So until the right date. But if we take global cycles of 400 years, it's not one or two years. It's like this seven year cycle is the shift and change going up to 2027 and then we grow into it so yeah. that's why i think it's not only going to be just you know this crumbling down and this chaos and confusion which it will be for a while but we will also start to grow into that that's what i think yeah 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 i would agree with you yeah if you, if you just take a look at um secular patterns that's exactly what happens, right? It's, you know, typically doesn't like, boom, it's, you know, spring, it takes a time for spring to, you know, uh, arrive, it takes time for the plants to, um, to, to grow, you know, the leaves to come out. So same thing here with this cycle as well. So just to, just to let you know. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's take a look at rationalization. So again, we have moved to this place of knowing in the 24 and the 24 is about rationalization. It's the return. Inspiration must be given a rational form right? So the pressure comes from the 61. And on the 24, it's like this inspiration, but how do you make it practical? So inspiration must be given a rational form. Remember, this is the bridge between the mind and form. So again, it's taking that concept, that inspiration from the 61, and starting to figure out how can we um, move it into rational form. This is the ability to take a unique inspiration and uh, convert it into a rational concept that can eventually be communicated to others. And it's the natural and spontaneous process of transformation, mental renewal, and unique knowing. It's individual knowing. So it's unique knowing. And your mind returns to the same idea or thought over and over and over and over and over again, reviewing it until it can be understood. So taking that concept, taking that inspiration and running it through the mind, right, over and over again so that you can get to, you know, what can truly be understood and, you know, where it can be given rational form. And rationalizing is a risk and a test of the spirit. And there is no proof or experience there is only knowing. That's what we were talking about earlier. There's no proof that you have on the logical side or experience that you have on the, uh, the collective experiential abstract side. There is only knowing. 
So I would love to hear, and uh, Natalie and, uh, and Linda, what are some things that, that you see about rationalization? And again, any of you that are in our Facebook live or, or here live in our Zoom room, uh, we would love to hear from you as well, especially if you have this particular trait and how you experience it. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because I have the 61 on the other side. So, and, and we just moved into it. So I'm, I'm curious uh, what it, uh, what I will experience this week. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, but, but it's the knowing is an inner knowing that you cannot explain that you don't know where it comes from, that, uh, that all of the sudden is there. Right. And, and it, this is it. it, it it's, um, individual energy so it's it's in a pulse it's not there it's not there it's not there and boom it's there right but then when you have this knowing um in the 61 well when the kind of the the idea or the inspiration comes into to then make it into form uh and and for others to be able to understand this individual knowing that comes from nowhere that you cannot explain right um so, so yeah, I'm curious what will, what will rational, rationalize for me this week. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. But, yeah. yeah really beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. How about for you, Linda? Yeah, I feel like this is a wonderful uh, trait and I know the 61 from working with Natalie yeah, she has a 61, as she mentioned, and um, I really feel this is really a mystical uh, combination, especially with the 61. It's like an antenna to the unknown mm -hmm. that becomes known in an instant. And um, I was intrigued by uh, the sentence about rationalization is a risk and a test of the spirit. It's really... Um, surrendering to what you know suddenly in a pulse and also um, trusting that rationalization that you are able to okay well this is what I know <laughs> um, and it, you really have to be aligned with your design um, because um, we live in a world yet still and almost seven years before shift, but already feeling the change that everything is about logic. Mm. So when you have an inner knowing, um, you have to be really comfortable with how it works to express this into a form um, that you are really strong about it and empower others to say, well, this is what I know. I don't know how I know it. I don't know why it works this way, but I know. <laughs> so I feel it. And then uh, also, yeah, what I, what I shared before, um, empower others to also uh, stand for what you know and not always having to rationalize uh, in an other sense um, to make it logic or experiential to refer to things, but just say, well, this is how I perceive it in this form. Um, and I'm going to present it to the world. And you can do it, you can do something with it. And maybe it's really innovative or it's really um, unique or because that's what I love about everything that's individual. It brings something new unexpected um, but I really feel that you have to embrace the um, yeah that it's really uh, powerful for yourself and for others so yeah exactly I love it's it and I yeah I'm, I'm really looking forward for Natalie to uh, she experienced because then she's even more able to to, to give um, a form to what she knows. Well, I'm, I'm giggling because right at the very beginning when we were just talking about crisis, you were just saying, I don't know how I know this or I don't know oh, I don't yeah. have anything to back it up. That's exactly was, this. Exactly. 
<laughs> exactly. I was thinking about the same. I was like, hmm, what did I just hear? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So a beautiful example, right? Having the 61, not having the 24, but since the 24 is currently activated, right? That's what, uh, you know, also what you're experiencing as well. Yeah. Antonio was saying it, it, it gets hard explaining to others when I just know exactly. That's the thing. It's hard to explain when you just know, you don't know how you know, you know, there's not necessarily logical proof. There's not something from experience. You just know. This is just knowing. Yeah. Um, and uh, Antonia says, trust is key for me because I have to hold it uh, quietly until I have enough information to conceive it into a rational form that, that, that then can be explained. <laughs> she said, ha ha, exactly. And that's why there's kind of a going over it and over it and over it. Like, how can you take this concept, right? And make it really solid that you can have be able to explain it because often when it first drops in, it's like, I don't, I don't even have the words to explain it. I can't even figure out how to explain it. So that's why oftentimes the mind needs to go over it and over it and over it so that you can get to it. Remember when we take a look at conceptualization, it is about certainty and finding certainty. And it's in a sense, finding that certainty by going over it again and again and again. Yeah, like, like you have to feel comfortable with with the information because that's the spirit, because it will be tested. People will say, how do you know? Right. <laughs> and exactly. then you have to have that, that process. You have to yeah, go through that. And then you really feel, but this is what I know. And I'm going to tell what I know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, and Lisa said, um, it just hit me why it takes so long to articulate inspiration into a practical form. But of course, I can't explain it. Exactly. Exactly. Really pure, beautiful example. <laughs> Antonia was saying, yeah, me too, Lisa. Exactly. Right. So again, it takes time. That's why you have to go through it because, you know, you get this idea and you want to explain it. And then it's like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> or, or you try to explain it and everybody goes, huh? What? Because, yeah. <laughs> right, if we take a look at where it leads to, right, the expression of it is the genius to freak. Uh, you know, a after that, if we, you know, take a look at where it leads to, you know, through its expression. So that's really beautiful. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Thank you so much. Any anything, Natalie, on uh, Facebook? Uh, no, it's all it's uh, awfully uh, quiet. But uh, most Facebook. Uh, uh, people joined us live here in the in the Zoom room now. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Beautiful. All right. Well, we are really at the foundation because we just moved into this quality one. We just moved into rationalization. We just moved into this quality one today, and this is the sin of omission. Right. This is the authority. So this is transformation that requires regressive periods before renewal can take place. So the elevation is inspiration that demands a reassessment of past thinking, looking in the rear view mirror, uh, before a rational concept can be established. The will to triumph, and in this case, the faith that, will e that the ends justify the means. Right. So in a sense, it's looking back. I thought this was a beautiful analogy because what we're going to be taking a look at next week is the two of the driver. So in a sense, right, if you're going to change lanes, right, you have to look in the rearview mirror to just kind of see, make sure nothing's in the way or, or kind of looking in the rearview mirror, um, taking a look at what's happened in the past before you can set forward in a new direction, which is what the two is next week. So I thought this was really a, a great analogy as well. When we take a look at the challenge, the challenge is inspiration that leads to irrational focus on what is past, self-delusion, which unnecessarily justifies periods of regression. So when you take a look at the sin of omission, it's kind of like, okay, what is in the past that we missed, right? And what is in the past that we need to revisit 
in order to move forward into the future, right? The driver in, in the two that we're moving to. So again, this is, you know, these periods of reassessment of past thinking. Remember, this is the bridge between the mind and form, because uh, next week we're going to be moving into purpose fulfilled through form. And so this ne uh, necessity to look at the past. But if you're looking in the rearview mirror and you're obsessed right, with what's in the past and you have this irrational focus on the past, you then can't see where you're going moving forward into the future. But there, there is this necessity to look back, right? See if anything was missed before moving forward. I would love to hear what you have to say, Natalie and Linda, about uh, taking a look at the sin of omission. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I was just thinking about that's also really interesting that we have the 16 and the 9 also in the background frequency because the focus can be uh, on the challenge mm -hmm. as well. Um, but also the 16 um, that you can see the, the victories and everything, the small victories uh, of the past and maybe have an, uh, a new knowing about it. Mm -hmm. And maybe you, we, people with this trade are able to see uh, what, what kind of victories they missed. So that was just going through my mind. Um, conceptualization is uh, helping me. I don't know if it's yet here, but I, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> if it does make sense. Um, and it is also um, this picture with the analogy it's really also that you have to to see what's behind you to be able to to switch lanes mm -hmm. in a safe way because if there's a car in the way you have a, an accident so um i really feel that yeah it's um it's it's a beautiful way of um like just what we discussed uh, here before about this trade going through everything again and also taking in the past and just yeah let it go through you and you you per perfect that's also the 16 I, I really have a strong connection with the background frequency you really are going to perfect uh, going through <laughs> Uh, and and see the hidden meaning and the challenges and that's also with the focus in the background um, if if your attention is on the past or in the future but in this case on the past you don't see the hidden gems of what's happening now and you don't feel um, the pulse mm. of your inner knowing in the moment because that's just a click and if you are not aware, you really miss yeah, your, your gift and your talent. Uh, and then you also can have a, feel, a feeling of that you, uh, the omission part, that that's maybe the only part that there is. And you may regret things, and et cetera. And then you don't empower others and you are, uh, maybe also taking a harsh look at yourself in going through things and blaming yourself, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, yeah, I really feel it's interesting, especially with, um, with the past and future direction frequency in the background. But I'm really curious what other yeah. people think about it. But that's how I feel. Yeah, That's absolutely. And, you know, when you were saying that also, I was just thinking because this is the return, right? So you can, you can like go over and uh, have you ever said something and go, oh, I should have said this and blah, 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 blah. And you're, or I should have done this. And in your head, you keep, you know, you keep looking to the past, you keep replaying the conversation in your head and wishing that you said it in a different way or did a different thing where you get so obsessed with it that you have this irrational focus on the past and exactly. it doesn't allow you to continue to move forward in the future because you get so obsessed with it versus looking, oh, whoops, did that. 
you know, going through it. Okay. This is what I could have done different, but not obsessing about it. It's like, okay. Um, you know, gone over, gone over it a few times. Okay. I realize why that happened. Now I can move forward and, you know, leave the past in the past. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How about for you, Natalie? Yeah. So as, as it is difficult to, um, so this is the foundational uh, quality, right? The authority. And uh, you need to investigate to, to get to the bottom of things, to, to be able to then be an authority or express about it. So with this inner knowing that you cannot explain and all of a sudden is there, and then you need to reassess and go over it. I think also the reassessment of past thinking is kind of tying it in with um, the knowing that you all of a sudden have to be able to explain it, right? To, to be able to be an authority in whatever you have to share about it, right? And um, so, and, and the individual energy is also the most, or, or the, um, um, uh, yeah, transformative energy, right? The mm -hmm. change comes from the individual energy and, and evolution comes through the individual energy. So, but to, to move forward, right? You can, people don't like change in, in general and, and to get used to the new idea or the, the, the new way of thinking or the, the whatever new and progressive and whatever it is, um, taking in the reassessment of past thinking, right? To be able to share about it, right. to be able to tie it to something that makes sense for people to get what, where, you, where you're going or whatever. So th that's what comes to mind for me. Yeah, beautiful. Oh, and Lisa had another hit. Whoa, I just got another hit. This time about how to articulate inspiration into form. But again, I can't explain it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, Lisa. That's perfect. Exactly. So Lisa, just, you know, read just a little bit of past thinking. And, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and Tanya says, with you, Lisa. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, and Lisa was saying, love that, Natalie, because people don't like change, right? And that's why it can also, what we were talking about, what Linda was talking about earlier, why it can challenge the spirit, right? Because people don't like change. It can challenge the spirit because you can, if you don't have it defined, right, it can also be a challenge, right? It, it, you know, you, you're afraid that you're not certain. You don't know how you know. And that can also, you know, if you make decisions from that place, um, you know, that, uh, trying to be, trying to be certain, um, it's not going to work out so well. So it's kind of, you know, trusting what, you know, when you know it and, you know, trusting the timing of when to also speak it as well. Yeah. 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 And then your energy will be perceived as, okay, I hear you. Um, uh, but if you are not certain, and you are in the pitfall of uncertainty and just say, and you're going to emphasize it and I know it and then people don't believe you. So it's really empowering when it comes from a place of alignment with what you know. That's how I feel about this trait. It's really being comfortable, aligned with what, what is in the moment and then just stand for it. And it's individual, yeah. Um, you do it for your, yourself in a sense, but you empower others or not. Yep, exactly. Yeah. And Tony was saying, yes, Linda, you know, timing is so important, right? These are also, if we yeah. take a look at these traits as well as the, the strengths here, you know, it, it is uh, projected uh, strengths, uh, projected traits that need to be recognized and invited. So meaning that the timing needs to be correct in order to express what this new inspiration is once you've had enough time to go through it to really be able to take that idea and move it into, into form or some kind of concept that you can actually speak about, right, in, in terms that, that others can understand. Yeah, and especially with quality one, because there is an inherent 
insecurity. Correct. So I feel like in this quality, it maybe takes some more time because it will trigger some uncertainty and you have to be really comfortable and have gone through it to to feel the solid foundation to have the right form to um to express your rationalization when the timing is there yeah beautifully beautifully said love it all right so let's take a look at our celebrity for today jerry seinfeld <laughs> I love this. So his life work theme is the way your very direction evolves consciousness and form together by seeking clarity or resolution through constantly revisiting mental concepts, you know, such as what, where, or who is God or what, where, and who, and how things work. And I, I think it's really perfect for the comedy that, uh, that, uh, you know, his, his comedic style. Um, so uh, if you're not familiar with Jerry Seinfeld, he's, uh, he's a stand-up comedian, he's a producer and an actor and a writer uh, who co-created and starred in the sitcom Seinfeld, uh, which became one of the most popular television comedies of all time. As a stand-up comedian, Seinfeld specializes in observation comedy. So the humor is based on the premise of "Have you ever noticed?" And if you, you know, if you take a look at the the Seinfeld episodes, there's always this, you know, the uh, the sin of omission. You know, I, I I could even see that. I don't know if that was an episode or not. I was going to look it up, but that could even be a title of one of the episodes. <laughs> you know, <that's laughs> kind of these, you know, the this "Have you ever noticed?" kind of noticing things. Right. And again, it's your very direction that evolves consciousness, right? The, the mental um, and form together by seeking clarity of resolution through constantly revisiting these mental concepts. And so that's often what, you know, the, the comedy was all about is just kind of recognizing, have you ever noticed these things and pulling some of those, uh, some of those things out. So I think it was very funny. <laughs> Love it. Well, I don't yeah. know if you guys are familiar with him or, or have anything to add. Not really to add, but yes, we are familiar with him. Uh, we have yeah. we have the, the Seinfeld sitcom as well, and 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 yes, I I, I recognize it is. It's is very funny that he actually has this as a uh, as as his life work, and and it was you know he created it right. Mm -hmm. So it's it's right. his you know really coming from his um, personal creativity. Uh, yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, exactly. and he has the full strength. So wow. yeah, so it's transformational, and it, and I I feel like it empowers people because it makes them laugh, but also take a different look mm -hmm. at things. Um, and it and I feel like he he is able to to make it in a funny way to yeah, to to translate it to something funny, but also he has a message. <laughs> exactly yeah there's an inner knowing inside uh underlying and i feel like that's a very powerful combination yeah and it's probably why the sitcom was so popular right and yeah. why it lasted that long being a lot you know being really aligned with who he is yeah. yeah and i was also told that humor or when people are going to laugh is when things are unexpected Mm -hmm. And I feel like with this trait and his strength, it's it's unexpected because it's his inner knowing at this at that moment. And that's really what triggers a lot of people to laugh. <gasps> wow, how can you say that? Because that's what makes you laugh. It's right. sometimes also a kind of not, not a really shock, but it's <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And comedy is all about timing, right? Yes. Something, something unexpected at the right time exactly. um, is what, what makes it humorous. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's what I, yeah, I think it's, it's wonderful to have uh, <laughs> this trait when you are a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. 
Great. Well, uh, so so think about, and I would love for anyone who is here in our Zoom room or you're watching via Facebook, um, just to, I want to give you just a moment to kind of allow everything that we talked about to uh, to sink in, and um, and then I would love to hear what to look for and what to um, pay attention to in this upcoming week. So um, again, if you are new to, uh, to BG5, you can always download a chart and take a look. Do you have that trait or not? This is my design. So I don't have uh, either the trait 61 or the 24. Uh, so you can take a look at uh, what your design is by downloading a free chart. You can also follow us with uh, BG5 Live. You can also watch past episodes in our free resource library or on YouTube. And we have classes that are coming up in the next couple of weeks. So um, I do want to invite you next week. Tuck is going to be joining us as well. And she has a class starting in a couple of weeks, the BG5 Foundation course. So especially if you're brand new, uh, this is a great place to start. Um, But check out our other courses as well. So um, there are several of you that are here that uh, that have taken um, uh, certification. So we have some advanced certifications, the Profit Potential Coaching Certification uh, that's going to be starting up as well here soon. So invite you to check it out and, uh, and be a part of one of our, one of our courses. And uh, they're really, um, really bring things in at a, at a whole deeper level. So thank you. All right. So let's wrap everything up by taking a look at Okay, what are some thoughts, ideas, things that we should pay attention to, um, things that we should be aware of as we explore this rationalization this week? So, uh, Linda, would you like to to start? Yeah, Um, well, I feel like, um, especially also when you have the uh, conceptualization undefined, Please don't feel uncertain or have a feeling or a pressure to be certain about things, but just go with the flow. Uh, Things will happen in a pulse. Uh, It's like a cooking process. Nothing's happening, just like in the garden. But uh, in the meantime, things are growing and suddenly you see everything pop up. Um, And um, yeah, and for, for especially with the first line, um, yeah, don't get caught up in uh, in too much taking a look at the past and focusing on the past, uh, but be present and trust, yeah, this trade and this influence that you may feel or, or know something suddenly that you were going over and over in your life for the past months and that you suddenly know. So pay attention to what comes up. Beautiful, beautiful, love it. Thank you so much, Linda. How about for you, Natalie? Yeah, and if I may, we we have sharing on on Facebook and it's Andy and he actually has the 24 in the first quality in his unconscious life work as well. And also as a conscious activation. Uh, and both in elevations. And it seems like it's about acknowledging the end of a cycle and the learnings from it, and question mark. So I I do often feel like something is done, didn't uh, work, and I'm figuring out how to change it and move forward. If I make the mistake of mentioning it too early with anyone involved, there is a strong reaction or resistance. It can really affect my motivation when I feel like we're carrying on with something that isn't working and nobody else sees it. (laughs) Mostly because we're not getting on with what could uh, work instead. Mm. So I think that's a that's a wonderful. uh, What comes to mind is is also the the innovation and the you know the creativity again the, the the transformative energy behind it and yeah uh, the the strength that it is leading into right is efficiency and and you know uh, making things more work better right so uh thank you for sharing that andy and um yeah so for all of us uh, this week it's it's uh interesting that we actually got this information now today in the first line quality so that we can observe a week right we we have time to to observe how we how we feel it and, 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 and see it show up. 
in uh yeah and and i completely agree with linda but just you see what you know gets into form and then we'll discuss form next week uh, a little bit more of of the yeah the ideas that that popped into your head and 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 how you can make it work and make things more efficient etc so yeah yeah beautiful thank you natalie yeah, and again, today, kind of taking a look also then, you know, again, taking a look at the past, but not getting stuck there so that you can move forward again, because this is, this is, in a sense, the bridge, you know, like Andy was saying, something is coming to an end, we're moving from uh, fulfilling purpose through the mind into fulfilling purpose through form. And so this is the bridge. This is the bridge. And, and what's what's next is the two. And the two is the magnetic monopole. This is the the, the moving forward. This is the driver. And uh, and so, um, you know, in a sense, it's preparing us uh, to then uh, move forward very, very powerfully as the driver. Um, so really and and i think um just to reiterate again don't get especially i know i have uh conceptualization undefined so especially if you have conceptualization undefined um recognize when you're really trying hard to be certain or if you're trying to make decisions from that place and remember always follow your decision making strategy when you do that it'll always keep you safe all right, everyone, it has been fabulous. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, and we look forward to seeing you next week. Again, I won't be here next week, but Tuck will be joining us next week. Uh, so look forward to seeing you then. All right, everyone, have a great week. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.